Hey guys, Kathy and North Star Prep Setter. Well, I've been wanting to dehydrate some potatoes in a flake form for a long time. So I'm finally doing it. I got a 10 pound bag of potatoes and I'm gonna take part of it and try that out. I really wanted to have a supply of those so that I could make like instant mashed potatoes of my own instead of relying on a box of Hungry Jack or something like that and just have them in my storage. Anyway, this is a learning process for me so I'm taking you along with. Okay, I've got a 10 pound bag of russet potatoes here. I've used a few, but I'm gonna just use maybe three pounds or so of these potatoes for what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna dump some out here. Should be plenty. It's what I want to be able to fit in this two quart pot. So I'm gonna put some cold water in here. And then let's do a, a quick rinse over all of these potatoes, get the dirt off of them. So they're not quite so dirty when I'm peeling them. Now a lot of these are smaller. You can certainly use, you know, the big baking russets. Russet potatoes are going to be better for this. You don't really want the red wax ones or the white potatoes. You can use Yukon Gold also, but these will dehydrate better just because of the nature and the texture of these potatoes. I have a cutting board to the side, so I like to peel you know, a couple potatoes and then cut them and put them in the water. That way they don't um, turn brown very quickly. Got some more sunshine coming in here. And there are a number of different potato peelers. This is what I have. Um, so it works well for me. I know some people take it and go like this direction, but to me that just takes longer. This is what I'm used to. So we have all those peels for my compost. If you have animals, they will love it too. I'm gonna give this just a quick rinse, get the dirt off of it, and do another one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do all these potatoes and cut them up. Okay, as far as cutting them up, Cut them in half this way, and then half this way. And for this particular size, I'm just doing them in thirds. So you've got a chunk that's maybe like a one inch square. And then put them right in the water. Keep them from getting brown. All right, I'm gonna finish up the rest of the potatoes. So this is about how full I have the pot, uh, the water just up to this inside rim. It's fairly well filled with potatoes in here. Okay, I'm going to put this pot right here on the burner and put it on high. Wait for this to come to a boil. Once it starts boiling, you want to turn it down to low, otherwise it's going to boil over. Okay, so these finished cooking actually about 10 minutes ago. I scraped off all the foam on the top and just threw that away. But you can see how well done these are. They're just falling apart. And that's what we want. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought I was recording before <laughs> I dumped out the liquid. Now I did reserve a little bit of the water that the potatoes cooked in, but otherwise I dumped the rest out. And you can see they're very well done. <laughs> I'm like kind of mashing them here with a spoon. But to get them really smooth and creamy, I'm going to use a beater. You can use um, a food processor or a blender or an immersion blender, whatever you have and whatever you're comfortable with, as long as you're getting it smooth. So you can see, even though I haven't added any type of milk or butter or anything or water, Look how creamy these are, and that's really what you want. Just really nice and creamy. Um, I'm, I'm gonna blend these for a little bit longer to get out any little lumps, because I can still see some lumps in here. But cooking them till they're very, very soft and just falling apart really helps them to cream up more. 
when you rehydrate them, that's when you're gonna add your water or milk, butter, your seasonings, all that. That's when that'll be done. How you guys like my pot with no handle? <laughs> I got this pot uh, over 25 years ago from some friends of mine. Um, her mom had passed away a few years before then and these were this was a pot that her parents had when they got married and so they used it for 30 years or something like that and um, anyway I'm still using it still a good pot even though it doesn't have a handle it's a great size all right blend it a little more all right this is pretty good I didn't have to add any water. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is put the potatoes on my dehydrator sheet. Now, I do have a square rack for the Excalibur and I do have these, um, they're called Paraflex sheets. They're just a silicone sheet, very much like um, a sill pad for your cooking sheets and everything. Just use whatever you have for your dehydrator. If you have a round one that has a plastic round insert that you use for fruit leathers, use that. Uh, whatever you have. This is thick enough um, so, you, so you don't have to worry about it spreading all over. So put some potatoes on here and then just spread it with a spatula. And you want it about an eighth of an inch thick at the most. And if this type of spatula doesn't work, you can use a flat one too. That also works really well. The key is to try to get it uniform in depth so that your potatoes will dehydrate uh, at the same speed. You can also put it on parchment paper. That'll work too. It's trying to get it even and then there's some areas that seem a little thick. So I'm just gonna take those off and then re-spread it a little bit. Okay, and that's going into the dehydrator. I only have three silicone pads and I need a fourth rack, so I'm going to use my mesh under here and then use parchment paper. I really like this. This is a compostable, unbleached, chlorine-free parchment baking paper, and I really like this. I've used this for quite a few years now. And it's wonderful. Turn it over so it doesn't roll on me. So this will be good. We'll see the difference between the two, the two different, <laughs> I want to say platforms, <laughs> but the two different surfaces. See how this goes. So I had, yeah, like about three pounds of potatoes and um, got just about four trays here. Trying to smooth this out as much as I can. So right here it's 135 and that's the temperature that you want to um, dehydrate this at. So I just turn it to 135. So now I need to let it dehydrate for at least eight hours. I did one batch before that didn't really turn out, but it took 12 hours for it to dehydrate. I may have had it too thick, I'm not sure. But the key is right now is to let it go five hours and then we're gonna flip it. So I will show you that. It'll be dark by then, so the lighting is gonna be all different and everything, but um, we'll see. <laughs> These might not be done till tomorrow morning. Anyway. Just stay tuned for the next step. Gone a little longer than I expected. <laughs> but, whoa. This really curled up. It's actually still a little bit pliable in some of the areas. Now there's some places that, this, that it was thinner. It's definitely crispy. So I'm just gonna put this thin stuff on a separate plate and I'm not putting that back in the dehydrator. You just want to make sure that it's like crispy, that it snaps really well. 
You can see this is like pliable, it's not snapping. So that definitely needs some more time. So what I wanna do is, is flip it over so that the side that had been down on the parchment or on the um, silicone can be up now and, and dry much easier. So this for the silicone, well, it's actually <laughs> staying in one piece here. And this is definitely a little bit better that it's thinner. Okay, this is all pretty crispy here. So I think that's gonna be good. I don't think I need to put that in anymore. So that one's good. There's this other tray here. Let's check this out. Okay, I can feel the moisture over here. It's actually been about eight hours since I put this in uh, instead of five, so I'm a little late on turning it at this point. So hopefully it's going to be okay. Some of this I just don't want to over dry, but. There's some that's definitely still pliable. I really don't think these are gonna need much more than another hour at the most here. So what I'm actually gonna do to allow more air to it is I'm gonna put these on the other tray with the mesh so that the airflow can uh, get through it much easier. Okay, and this is definitely also very moist on the bottom. Take the crispy parts. And put that back in the dehydrator. And turn it back on to 135. I'll let this go for another hour or two. In the meantime, I've got all of this crispy potatoes. So you can see I put the dried pieces of potato in my little mini uh, food processor. I'm finding that this is working better than my big one. I just broke it up into smaller pieces so everything could fit better. And here I've got potato flakes. And I'm just storing them in my pint jar for right now. So I'm gonna keep doing this process as the pieces dry and then come and grind them up and then store them in my jar. Okay, the very last of these is dry. And I'm gonna break these up into pieces and grind these up too. All right, you guys look at this. So it's three pounds of potatoes fit a pint jar. Fits it very nicely. And now I can vacuum seal this. I did put in a desiccant pack just to keep the moisture out of here. A desiccant is a moisture absorber. And, um, but look at that, three pounds right up to the, the rim here and I vacuum seal it and it's gonna last a long time. That's really sweet, look at that. Dehydrated potatoes. Okay, so I did about seven pounds of potatoes. Even though I said it was three, it might have been closer to four. Um, this jar was a little bit less. This batch that I did was actually, uh, I made it a little bit thicker and it was much harder to grind up in my big food processor. That's why I went to use my mini one. The mini worked so much better in getting these uh, ground up into smaller flakes. Now these are not going to be lightweight like the ones that you buy in the store like Hungry Jack or something. Those are a different process of fluffing them. These are kind of hard little chips but they will still rehydrate just wonderfully into the potatoes that you want. So now what, what I need to do, I've got a moisture absorber in each one of these jars and now I want to vacuum seal them. Okay, here's my food saver sealer and I have the lever on open so that this is free and no lights are on. When it's locked, you push it forward and you see that and I can no longer lift that up. So for right now, we want it open. So these, both of these jars are regular mouth lids and 
For the vacuum sealing, this is an extra attachment for it. This is a regular size lid sealer. You can see there's like a rubber gasket inside and um, a hole through the top. And this is a Food Saver brand that goes with this. Okay, so I'm going to take the rings off for now. I want to make sure the rims are free of powder. You don't have to worry about cleaning them because the potatoes are very dry. There's no oils or anything that like that with it. But you do want to make sure that this rubber section is free of powder. Otherwise, it's not going to seal well. Okay, so those are ready. This also comes with a little hose. The two different color ends. It's not always going to be green and gray, but um, it tells you right on here where they go. This one is to the vacuum sealer and this one's to your accessory, which is our lid sealer. So the green one plugs right into this hole here and you want to snap it down so it's nice and solid. Then I put this on the jar first because you want to make sure, we'll do one, one jar at a time here, you want to make sure it's down very securely so that it's not loose. Now I have found that the 12 ounce jars, like the jelly jars, this does not work for. So you need to have a jar that it's going to seal well. Okay, this gray end where it says to accessory, you put that into this end and secure it down very well. Then you put the lever forward till the light is on and you hit, there are two buttons here, one says seal, one says vacuum and seal. So to seal it, is this heating element inside that's just going to seal a plastic bag but we want to vacuum seal it and so we don't have to worry about the heating thing in here we just want the vacuum going while it's going i'm going to be pressing down on it just to give it a little extra force to be able to seal well and it goes faster that way so i'm going to hit the vacuum seal and you can listen to it When it's drying the oxygen out, it will always um, have that acceleration in uh, the tone. And then you wait until those lights are out. And then what you want to do is release this one first and listen to the vacuum. Okay, so you, you can hear that the vacuum was sealed. And then you can remove this lid. A lot of times the, the rubber ring will come off of it too but now it's sealed in there and there's no oxygen in there what you want to do with sealed dry goods is still put a ring on just in case before you get into this again that for some reason the seal came undone because it does happen not everything seals like forever when you do this but if you have the ring on that prevents other things from getting into it moisture or if this gets knocked loose the the lid comes off and all that type of thing. So I've got that done. Put the rubber ring back in here. I'm going to do our second one. Now when you go to do another one, you want to release this. So you just pull it back and you do that. Stick this in here. Really securely. And hit Listen to that sound. I love that sound. Full vacuum seal. By that time it stayed in and it's sealed up and I put the ring on and then I'm going to write on here what these are. I'm just going to say potato flakes 420. So I, I just put the month and year so I know when I did them. You could even just put the year on it if you want to, but it really does help to know how long it's sitting on your shelf. Now these are all vacuum sealed, ready to go for my medium length storage. Um, 
long term remember I said that it's like 15 to 25 years I know that these won't last that long but these will certainly last in the two to five year range so there I've got potato flakes I can make mashed potatoes well the the sun is setting on another day so it's taken me a couple days to get to this point because it's just like trial and error and um, doing a couple different batches and it is it does take a long time for them to dehydrate, but it's worth it. And my recommendation is spread it as thin as possible because not only will it dry faster, it will be flakier and not as hard and it'll be easier to flake up. There's some dehydrated potato flakes that you can turn into mashed potatoes whenever you need them. I hope you try this sometime. You know, if you don't have a dehydrator or if you don't have a, like a little mini food processor or something. See if there's somebody that you can borrow one from or do this together with someone. So anyway, take care. God bless. Always have hope. Bye.